What's up, people? This is Alexander. Obviously, I am on my way to ballet. It's the slicked back look right now. Anyways, topic of discussion. This is actually for my man, Nick Ortiz. He sent me good questions in the direct messages, uh, which I thought would be prudent to answer for everybody since it's a very common question. His situation, what do you do when you, you've been losing body fat and you've lost body fat, but your fat loss has stopped? What do you do when you hit a plateau? So this is a big context question. You have to lay out the whole scenario. To state some fundamentals before I dive into it, fat loss is not a lifelong process. The idea is that if you need to lose body fat, that you will diet for a period of time, and then after you have reached your weight loss goal, your body compositional goal, then you maintain that. Now, there's a lot of nuance to that. The misconception that a lot of people have is the idea that, well, if you, if you eat in a calorie deficit, then you must have to eat that way for the rest of your life. That's not the case. That's not the case. If you eat in a calorie deficit, you eat in a deficit for a period of time and lose some amount of body fat, and then eventually it will stall out in, you know, two, three, four, five, six months, you know, maybe a year, and you'll need to stop dieting, reverse your diet, go back up to maintenance levels. You may gain back some weight, allow your body to maintain a isocaloric balance for a period of time, usually let's say one to two months, and then you go back to dieting again. So it's a long-term process. For people that, I, for the majority of people, I realize they model themselves after kind of a bodybuilding model where you just keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting. Since bodybuilders, especially natural bodybuilders, they'll cut calories for six months straight. They'll diet for very long periods of time. The thing is, though, is that that's not a permanent state that you reach. It's not a permanent process. You can get down really low in body fat, but you eventually have to go back up. So if you are overweight, you've been losing body fat, and you hit a plateau, well, what do you do? Well, there's a couple of things. One, how long have you been dieting for? These are questions. I don't have answers. These are questions. First thing being, how long have you been dieting for? If you've been dieting for six weeks and you hit a plateau, maybe you need to give it more time. Or maybe you cut calories too rapidly and you have nowhere to go. So then it comes down to a question of, well, how are you dieting? Are you cutting calories dramatically? Did you slash 1,000 calories your diet from the outset? Or did you diet slowly and now you just you hit that long-term plateau where you need to reverse things? So you have to ask yourself those two questions. How am I dieting? How long have, have I been dieting? Then you have to ask yourself modifications. If you've been dieting by cutting carbs, well, maybe you've gotten to a point now where you need to cut out fat. If you've been dieting by just maintaining a strict calorie deficit every day, maybe you need to consider calorie cycling. If you've been dieting by carb cycling, maybe it's time to just cut your calories down lower because that's what it's gonna take. So there's all these variables, there's all these possibilities. Um, obviously, I can't answer any specific question as to well, why did my fat loss stop? I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea. I would need to sit down, you know, or, you know in a you know, hypothetical scenario, metaphorically sit down, phone call, talk for an hour, and figure out what you've been doing, how you've been doing it, how long you've been doing it, get all the specifics, and then I can make specific recommendations as to what you might do next. All that said, what does that mean for fat loss? Fat loss is a very involved process. It can be simple, it can be complicated. I prefer to make it as simple as possible for people, but at the same time, pragmatic reality, as I like to say, brutality of reality, at the same time, there's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge you're gonna have to learn, and a lot of it's gonna be learned through trial and error, and it's gonna be a commitment to the process that sees you through you know, hitting your eventual body compositional goal. It's not gonna be a single one-time solution. There are no magic diets, there are no perfect quick fixes, there are no silver bullet solutions that um, you know, cure all of your ills. Be eating grilled chicken breast and broccoli for a month, lifting cardio, I've lost three, five pounds. That's awesome. If, that, if that's working, keep doing it. Um, yeah, that's the other factor. If you're doing something that works for fat loss, you know, this is another question. Um, sometimes it's, it's adjunctive, where someone's losing fat, well, how can I lose fat faster? You don't want to lose fat faster. You want to be slow, otherwise it won't stick. The faster you lose weight, the more likely you are to rebound. Always. You cannot force biology. You cannot force metabolism. So, you know, that question of if you're losing fat, can you make it go faster? No, if you're losing fat, keep doing what you are doing and don't fuck with it. The enemy of good is perfection. There is no perfect way to lose fat. There's this ways that work, they're sustainable, and there's ways that don't work, they're not sustainable. Or there's just things that don't work out, period. So, you know, for Nick, your scenario where you've lost, I think you said 28 pounds and your fat loss is stalled, I, I don't know, brother, you know, not to pitch you on something, but if you really want to figure it out, fucking phone call a consultation, we can set that up, but uh, there's a whole range of possibilities as to why you've plateaued. 
So the specific why, you're going to have to troubleshoot and work backwards. That's my best recommendation for you and for everybody else. Any questions, people? Five minutes. These always come out to five minutes. I'm always fascinated by that. I never intend to, but they always equal out five. I will cut more carbs, rice out, and stay with chicken and vegetables. Yeah, well, you know, dude, you don't need to stay with chicken and veggies. I mean, like, don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of contradicting my own advice, but if you want to have fish, you can have fish, or beef, you can have beef. Um, you know, sometimes, not that it's going to solve your plateau, but some variance in a diet, uh, that can make a difference just in terms of psychological uh, relief, and then, you know, sort of psychological drive. There's also the whole factor of, let's say, like cheat meals and refeed meals and, uh, you know, uh, let's see, let's say like a spike meals. I mean, that's a whole other area where, you know, maybe that could be a solution. But again, I, I don't know how you've been doing things. Keto has been amazing for fat loss. Me. Good, good. Yeah, keto seems to work for a lot of people. If it works, it works. I haven't eaten today. Uh, I would suggest you eat. I'm not sure what you're happy about with that. Unless I guess you're fasting. That's always, a, that's always a chick thing. Women are always very proud of not eating. Fasting. Oh, okay. Cool. Whatever. Fasting's fasting. I already, I already wrote a book on that. <laughs> thoughts on Tough Mudder? Nah, I don't have thoughts on that if you want to. I, I, it's, there are certain things, guys, not to be an asshole. I don't give a fuck about Tough Mudders. If you enjoy doing it, if you want to, by all means, go, go ahead and do it. Um, yeah, that, that's it. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it, goes, it goes for a lot of things. Some things, you know, these questions. What do you think of this? If you want to, that, that's it. You have free will, if you want to. Unless you have real specific questions about it, in which case you need to better define and articulate what those questions are. The thoughts question is always uh, very vague. What are your thoughts on this? I don't know. Are deadlifts sufficient for ab training? No. No, that's, that's a fucking bullshit myth. Um, there are people that can get away with never training their abdominal muscles at all, and they can get very, fairly strong. But uh, reality is that most people they have deficiencies across their whole torso, core, glutes, you know, lower abdomen area, and you need to train those functionalities specifically. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to train. It doesn't take a lot to train core. Um, you know, that's a question I got the other day. You know, do you have to have a day of core training? You don't have to have a day of core training. You, you don't need to have a whole workout day to get it dedicated to core. That said, you should be doing something for your, let's just say, torso stability, and you should be able to diagnose and figure out if you do have weaknesses that are holding you back. Um, you know, for, there's a lot, I mean, lots of common things. People, just bad breathing patterns, inability to brace, uh, very weak obliques, very, very weak lower abdominal area, very weak glutes. So, you know, everything, everything ties together, everything's connected. Um, you want all the component parts to be, you know, strong and integrated. Is it okay to do arms every day? Yeah, it's fine. It just if you recover from it. I don't know if it's necessary, but you can. It, it can be fun to blast arms. Yeah, you know, one of the programs I have the arms program. You train arms like every day for two weeks uh, at the beginning. Yeah, you know, why is that? It's kind of a shock to the system, but guess what? Your arms fucking grow. Um, that said, you're only doing like two sets a day, so it's not that much volume. You know, typically, if you're going to train a body, if you're going to train a body part at the end of a workout, every workout. Uh, take one or two sets to failure, and that's it. It doesn't take much more than that. Fre frequency matters not more for muscle growth and volume, but kind of does matter more than for... Frequency Frequency kind of does matter more than volume for muscle growth. Kind of. I'm trying to think of a way to articulate that, but it requires a lot of definition, and I don't think any of you know how volume works in the first place. So, Cardio at end of lift session. Again, if, if you want to... Um, that gets argued back and forth. Is, is it going to be? Is it going to hurt muscle? Is it going to hurt gains? You know, honest to God, unless it's, unless you're running for an hour after lifting weights, that'd be a lot. Um, but in the cases of cardio, that's you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, slow cardio, maybe you do a little hit session. It's probably fine. That comes down more so to recovery. If you can recover from it again, then do it. I can't squat, and then you have fucking tight hips, hamstrings, glutes, weak core, weak everything. You need to fix that. How do I gain motivation to drag my ass to the gym? Uh, you don't. You don't. I, I honestly have no idea how people motivate themselves if you rely upon motivation. I've never given, needed a reason to go to the gym. I just love to fucking do it. It's like everything else in my life that I do, I love to fucking do it. Or I need to do it. Henceforth, I do it. Um, motivation, yeah, fuck motivation. What kind, of, what kind of fucking man do you want to be? You know, ask yourself that question. 
what kind of man do I want to be? Who would I want to show up as? You know, if I put you in a fucking room right now full of women and told you to take your shirt off and fucking give a speech and, you know, make all of them desire you, would you be able to do that? No? Well, then go fucking to the gym. There. Do that. There's your fucking motivation. Anything else, guys? Yes, no, maybe so. DHEA supplements for older men. Uh, you know, it's very 50-50 and whether those are beneficial or not. Um, I, I, I've heard some guys get benefits from it that they think they, uh, you know, some guys take it and they swear they has benefits. Others, it's, you know, they take it and they don't notice anything, so try it and see. You know, it comes down to kind of what your hormone levels are at. If you've got healthy testosterone levels as an older man, then you're probably fine. If you got lower testosterone levels, well, then, I mean, that's a whole other case of issues. Um, and DHEA is probably not going to be the singular thing that solves that um, at all. All right, guys, I got to go. How's your luck with the ladies? Fucking superb. Um, that's why I know what I'm talking about when I talk about it. So, talk to you all again. I got to go. Ballet.